Hey guys, what is up, and welcome to my Week 16 review for the 2019 NFL season. So I want to go over something really quick. Um, got really busy, never recorded this, never got this ready, never did anything for this, which is why it wasn't out, you know, before Week 17. So, um, and then I didn't do Week 17 predictions. I will do a review for Week 17. I got like three, four videos I want to record. Um... My entire family's been sick lately, and I don't know if you can hear it in my voice or not, but I think I'm starting to get sick. I was like the lone person who hadn't gotten sick yet, between people getting like just normal colds, um, my niece got pink eye, um, like stomach bugs going around, half my family was sick on Christmas Day, um, the other half got sick the day after, um... You know, it was just multiple days where someone wasn't feeling well. Then we, um, you'll see this in week 17 because that's where, how I made my picks. I just posted them on Twitter, um, that, um, I went on a little, like, road trip with my family. We, uh, went to go see my, we went to my dad's hometown to go see his side of the family, um, because his family lives over there. Um, I live near my mom's family. We stayed in that area. So, um, they, you know, we went to go see his family and his side of the family. And that's when my niece's eye got really puffy. Let me think which eye was it. It was her left eye. It got like really puffy. So when we got back, we took her to urgent care. And that's where they said she has pink eye. So from Sunday going into Monday, she was contagious with pink eye. Um, Tuesday, New Year's Eve, she wasn't contagious with pink eye anymore, but she was still sick. You know, different colds and whatnot. Then you got New Year's Day. And then yesterday, today, as you know, I'm recording this. I'm recording this on Friday. I was with my niece all week long Sunday to go see my dad's side of the family Monday she had the pink eye I was watching her very careful to you know wash my hands and whatnot after touching her um, Tuesday she's not contagious anymore but she's still sick normally she goes to daycare well I watched her and then Wednesday my sister head off from work but she still watched her you know she watched her Yesterday, Thursday, um, I watched my niece the entire day because guess what? She was sick. So I'm not sure if I'm getting sick as well now. I was like the one person to not get sick and it might finally be happening. So I will try my best to get all the videos done that I want to get done. And we'll see how that goes. So let's go into my review of week 16 so uh texans at we had three saturday games the texans uh at buccaneers the bills at patriots and the rams at 49ers now i picked the texans patriots and 49ers to all win their games mm. so that's awesome that i was able to do that and which started off this really good week. By the way, I forgot to mention my record. You can see that my week 16 record, I went 12 and 4, which gave me a season record of 151, 86, and 1. Now, um, so um, Texans versus Bucks, there was, I don't even, if I remember correctly, there was an insane amount of turnovers in that first half. I think Jameis threw like two pick sixes in the first half or something like that. That was unreal. And actually, should I, should I mention this now or later? Eh, I'll, I can mention them both. Um, Jameis actually became the first player in NFL history after week 17 to throw um, 30 touchdowns and 30 interceptions in a single season. So, Jameis is a very good... He can be a very good player. 
He literally just has to stop turning the ball over. Don't turn the ball over, and you're talking about he's like a top 10 quarterback. Uh, Bills at Patriots. Um, lots of missed calls on the Patriots. That much I remember. I watched this game because, I, you know, I'm an hour from Buffalo. Um, grew up in a family of Bills fans. My sister's boyfriend is a Bills fan. But um, I remember there was quite a few missed calls, and they even missed a, during, like, the Bills' final drive, they missed a face mask on Josh Allen. Now, that really didn't end up mattering because they got the necessary yards in order to get to that point and beyond. But that still would have been helpful. Because you never know. You get that penalty, you move 15 yards up, uh, the Bills come out in a different formation, in a different play call, and maybe they score a touchdown. It, there's a lot of maybe hypotheticals in that scenario. Um, using, or, you know, the Bills get the call. They line up in whatever different player formation, and Josh Allen throws a pick. Someone fumbles. This happens. That happens. You, ne you never know with hypotheticals. You know. Alright, uh, Rams at 49ers. Um, I do remember, I didn't watch this game, really. And that's because I was at Dave & Buster's, um, during this game. Uh, I do remember Jimmy Garoppolo, I think, led a game-winning drive, if I'm correct. And they had to kick a field goal right at the end to win a game, to win the game, if I remember correctly. Like I said, I was at Dave & Buster's having fun. Um, I had a double date. So I really don't remember. Okay, so now we get to go into these Sunday games. Uh, Bengals at Dolphins. So I picked the Dolphins. Yay for me. Bengals, they were a bad team this year. They were. Uh, Steelers at Jets. This game I watched, uh, it was televised here because the Bills had played the day before. Usually the Bills are on TV. But I was able to watch this game. And, uh, ouch. So, Duck struggled week 15. He threw f four picks. And Mason did that before. He threw four picks They gave him in, against uh, Cleveland, and they gave him a chance versus Cincinnati. He threw one pick, and for the most part, he struggled, so they put in Duck Hodges. Well, week 15, Duck throws four picks. They give him a chance versus the Jets. He threw two picks, and he struggled. So the Steelers said, yeah, you're done. You're done. Bye-bye. Go sit on the bench. Mason, you're in. And Mason came in, and he actually played pretty well. Those 10 points, those were all Mason. And then, I believe in the third quarter it was, um, Mason takes the snap from under center. As he's coming back, he trips. Um, he tries to like extend his hand out. And his hand has the football, try to get to the running back. You know, then the play isn't completely negative. And he, you know, reaches, but he can't reach enough. Um, the running back doesn't get the ball. He still has the ball. It's not like he's like, here, and the running back didn't get it. You know, he was just on the ground. And then he knows he hasn't been touched yet. So he thinks, okay, maybe I can get up and throw the ball away. Or, you know, see if anyone's open, possibly, or just throw the ball away. Which, in my opinion, he probably would have just thrown it away. He goes and gets up, and a bunch of Jets linemen, uh, D linemen, just go, and he ended up like dislocating his shoulder, and it was actually pretty bad. There was um, a couple of tweets that um, I saw for articles and whatnot that said it was actually worse than the Steelers um, had originally thought. Um, you know, it's not like it's a career-ending injury or anything like that. Sorry, I got a text. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, Mason. So, it was actually, like, worse than the Steelers originally thought, where he kind of got lucky in how it got dislocated. I know that sounds bad, but it actually could have been a lot worse, because, like, all the stuff that's... Because it was his non-throwing shoulder. He's right-handed, and it was his non-throwing shoulder. So, you got all this crap in here, 
Like, your heart's right here. Oh, you can't see it. Like, your heart's, like, right here. And let me move over. And, you know, you got your shoulder here. So your heart's here. So all that's in there. And it had something to do with, like, his aorta. And it was, like, really bad. It could have been a lot worse. So uh, Mason actually got pretty lucky there. I, I just realized, I'm like, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. All you can see is, like, this uh, with my shoulder. You can't see, like... But yeah, you know, like your heart's, um, you know, people are like, well, your heart's in the middle. Well, ish, it's, you know, a little bit to the left. So your heart's over here and your shoulder's here. You get 300 pound linemen landing on you and you'll, you know, you get squished. So, um, you know, it's going to be quite a bit of a recovery for Mason. Um, he actually played pretty well once he came in for Doc, so... People gave him a lot of crap this year, and they don't believe he can play. I'm like, look, for a second-year guy playing his first NFL action that um, he was a third-round pick, I, and that's the thing. You look at his stats, he didn't do terrible he actually beats Tom Brady in a stat, which is, I think, completion percentage. He, like, he beats Tom Brady in completion percentage, which is mind-boggling. So, anyway, the point about that is, you know, he had, you know, some tough games. I thought he was playing well for the most part until he got that hit by Earl Thomas when he got knocked out. And a lot of people actually legit... Like, from what I was seeing, people legit thought he died. Like, right there. <laughs> Done. You know, like, the way he got hit and how he, you know, just on the ground after. Like, you know, he, you could tell he was out before he hit the ground. Um, and for how long he was down for, how Juju reacted, um... There was just a ton of different things where, and then, you know, so he took that hit um, against the Browns. And I think, honestly, after that, he was playing scared. He was. And then they benched him. He got a few games to get that out of his head. And I thought he was playing a lot better. Now he'll have the offseason to get this season out of his head. But, you know, you also had the Miles Garrett situation where Miles took him to the ground and he didn't have to. Um, I know a lot of people said, that, you know, were saying, like, that's a football play. Like, Freaking Joe Schobert was there too, but he didn't take Mason down. He knew Mason didn't have the ball, so he left. You know, he didn't sack Mason. He didn't try to tackle him. He didn't try to sack him. He was right there. It's like, oh, Mason doesn't have the ball. I don't want to get, you know, flagged for hitting him after the pass, so I'm not going to hit him. So it was like whether Miles Garrett knew he, Mason had the ball or not, it's it's up for debate and then the fight after what was said what wasn't said you never know with these things by the way you can clearly see the records now i completely forgot to mention that but it's just kind of an iffy season for him he had a tough year um duck he played well and then as soon as teams got some tape on him that was it. They got tape on him, and he did nothing after. I said, um, after the Week 2 game, when Ben, you know, left and Mason came in, I said after the Week 2 game that it's easy to succeed when people don't expect you to play. So, like, the Seahawks, they watched film on Ben. That's what they watched. They didn't watch film on Mason because they didn't expect Ben to be hurt and have to leave the game. But, you know, they weren't expecting him. That's the thing. So, and then I remember before Mason's first snap, because uh, Mason took over to start the second half. Before his first snap, he looked over at Jadavion Clowney, who was on the sideline, and they're both from um, South Carolina. But he looked at Clowney, and he winked at him. Like, that's the swagger that Mason has. Or had. 
and then he took that hit and he completely lost it. I didn't see that swagger. I didn't see, you know, you see like stuff from from him in college and stuff in, in the preseason when he was playing. Um, but you get all that stuff. And he has that swagger. He has that fire. You know, people use the, you have to have that dog in you. And he has that. And then he took that hit from Earl. And that dog became a whimpering little puppy. He completely lost it. I didn't see it in him. And then he got benched. And when he came in the Jets game, <laughs> I saw it. He was cool. He was calm. He was collected. He left the pocket. Like, that's the thing. He got hit by Earl Thomas when he ran out of the pocket. When he came back, I didn't see him leave the pocket. Now, again, I'm only an hour from Buffalo, so I don't see Pittsburgh games that often unless they're either A, nationally televised, B, if the Bills are on, like, a buy or something. You know, there's certain situations where I see the Steelers games. After he took that hit, I didn't see him leave the pocket. He just stayed in there. Like, he... He was playing scared. And then he came back versus the Jets. He left the pocket. He played well. He made smart decisions. He threw a touchdown. He didn't throw any picks. He played pretty damn well. And then he got hurt. So I'm curious to see what next year holds. I'll do this all again in my Steelers review. I'm sorry I'm ranting. I'll probably edit some of it out. But... Let's move on. Um, Giants Redskins. I picked the Giants. Hey. Oh, by the way, uh, I picked the Steelers over the Jets. Oops. Honestly, thought they were going to win. Um, Giants at Redskins. I did pick the Giants. And, um, yeah, Danny Dimes, man. Good for him. Um, yeah. I mean, him and Dwayne Haskins are going to face each other. Uh, though the Redskins were a mess even after they fired Jay Gruden. Um, though they did hire Ron Rivera. So that's good for them. I think he'll do well. Maybe not as well as he did in Carolina, but at least he won't be a, you know, like an idiot or anything as a head coach for them. The owners will just need a little bit of patience. Oh, hey, he gets Josh Norman back. He, co he coached Norman in Carolina, and now he gets him in Washington. I just realized that. Oh, uh, speaking of the Panthers, uh, yeah. They're a mess without Ron Rivera. Um, Ravens at Browns. Um, I Oh, by the way, I did pick the Colts, right? Yes, I did. Uh, I did pick the Ravens for a little bit. It, it was a little iffy, and then Lamar Jackson said, okay, enough of this. And Baker's Baker. The Browns are the Browns. Freddie Kitchens got fired. Not after this. After the season, he got fired. So, uh, Jags at Falcons. I picked the Falcons because the Jags are a mess right now. Um, it's similar to Duck Hodges. Teams got film on Garner Minshew. He struggled. I think Nick Foles. He could be in a situation where he's playing scared, just like Mason was. Or he's not fully healed from his shoulder. You know, what, or whatever injury he had at the beginning of the season. Saints at Titans. I picked the Saints. No real surprise. Uh, Lions at Broncos. I picked the Broncos. Uh, Cardinals at Seahawks. I did pick the Seahawks, and the Cardinals surprised me here. Cowboys at Eagles. Uh, I thought the Cowboys had it. I just thought the Eagles were still too injured. But there you go. I thought the Cowboys would have it. They have it, and they win the division. That'd be... That'd be the end of that, and they didn't even manage to score a touchdown. They scored three field goals. Which, oi. Um, Chiefs at Bears. I did pick the Chiefs. I didn't see it going like this, but I'll take it. Uh, Packers at Vikings. I picked the Vikings, thinking they're at home. Kirk Cousins can finally do something on Monday Night Football. You know, like, there was a thing where Kirk Cousins had never won on Monday Night Football, but Aaron Rodgers had never won in Minnesota. I was like, okay, well, one of these is ending. And it ended up being Aaron Rodgers never winning in Minnesota. He is now one in Minnesota. Good for him. So, 
that is uh, my week 16 review for the 2019 NFL season. If you guys enjoyed this, please hit the like button. And if you're new, please hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later. Once I was seven years old, mama told me, go make yourself some friends or you'll be lonely. Once I was seven years old.